and uh, uh, this one is being published by Oxford University Press and it's called uh, Depression, War and Cold War Studies in Political Economy and uh, th that's what the cover is going to look like at least uh, so you can look for that uh, I'm rather interested in this book uh, compared to the others I've written uh, in recent years because uh, I've, I've done several collections of articles and uh, uh, edited volumes and, and things of that sort. Uh, th this, <clears throat> this book uh, from Oxford is, uh, is, is a meteor book. Uh, it's, uh, it consists of ten chapters, uh, all, all of which were in some form previously published. Everything's been redone for this book and integrated so that it's all uh, part of a coherent book. But uh, the, these, uh, these papers are, in a sense, the, uh, among my more serious follow-ups to Crisis and Leviathan. Uh, I, I complain sometimes that people think, you know, this guy Higgs, what did he ever do? He, well, he wrote a book. He wrote a book called Crisis in Life, and that's what he did. Well, it's true, I did that, but uh, I, I've done other things, believe it or not. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and I don't think they're all just trivial. And so I hope this, uh, this book will show that after Crisis in Leviathan, I continued to do some worthwhile work uh, in this area, uh, it deals with the such uh, topics as why the Great Depression lasted so long, uh, far longer than in any other country, uh, uh, what the relationship was between the end of the Depression and World War II. Uh, there's a, a received doctrine that says the war ended the Depression. And I uh, have long disputed that and tried to clarify in what sense, if any, the war may be taken to have ended the depression. And uh, so there's, uh, there's a, a, a number of chapters on the nature of the war economy during World War II. This has been held up for a long time as the prime validation of the vulgar Keynesian model. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's anything but that. And so I'm at pains here to demonstrate exactly why that's a bankrupt view, uh, even though it's held to this day, not only by general public, uh, but by, uh, by most economists, I think, still. I see it uh, every time I open books uh, that have anything to do with this. People are asserting the war ended the Depression, just as if it's as obvious as anything can be. So uh, I deal a lot with the war economy. I think it's been totally misunderstood. Uh, and uh, this is a good topic for an Austrian because it's been misunderstood for the same reasons uh, that people misunderstood uh, the socialist calculation problem, basically. They, uh, they just didn't know uh, what was a meaningful uh, uh, a number, basically. <laughs> People look at the reduction of the unemployment rate in World War II or the rise in, in measured uh, GDP and they think prosperity. And they're wrong. Uh, the second five chapters in this book are about the Cold War period and, uh, and uh, in different ways uh, analyze uh, what that involved in terms of uh, the relationship between the war economy uh, and uh, the, the rest of the economy uh, deal with things like the nature of, uh, of business fluctuations. Even the dating of business cycles is altered if we get more serious about the role of the war economy. And, uh, and I take up questions of the profitability of the big defense contractors and the role of public opinion in sustaining high levels of uh, military spending and a num number of other things. So uh, I hope you will uh, have a look at Depression, War, and Cold War uh, when it comes out. Uh, should be available in, in May. Thank you very much.